Dear Journal, Heavenly Father, Mother Creator, future best friends in person, and converted enemies, and enemies that will always be. Here's some more opinions. Here's some more facts of numbers and patterns for the lottery that I'm trying to master with being able to hit it on a specific day. Yesterday's drawing, last night, last night was some familiar numbers. I've seen them before recently. 11, 19, 39, 44, 65, and 7 is the power ball, and 2 is the power plate, times 2. So, 7 times 2 is 14. Eleven plus nineteen is thirty. Nineteen minus eleven is eight. Nineteen minus eleven is eight. And then when you add up the two numbers, eleven plus nineteen is thirty. Therefore, it's thirty-eight. Thirty-eight was the number in a drawing the previous Monday, 38, right in the middle. It was in a core. Then you have, when you go from left to right with the lowest number to the highest number, not that it's drawn that way, but it's laid out that way for you. And I stick with that way of looking at the patterns. So from left to right, it's 19 and 30 and 39. So 39 plus 19 is 58. 39 minus 19 is 20. So 58 minus 20 is 38. 3 eighths. 38. So the difference is 8. The difference is 20. The addition is 30. And the addition is 58. And when you break them down and add them and subtract them, you get your both 38s. Thirty-nine plus forty-four is eighty-three. Forty-four minus thirty-nine is five. 39 plus 44 is 83, which is 3 eighths. The very first three numbers is just, it's 3 eighths. It's not that, it's not that 3 eight is going to be a, necessarily a, a number because it already was played the previous day, but to have the fingerprint of 888 old Johnny Click it's in that number also then you have 44 plus 65 which is 111 
and you have 65 minus 44 is 21. So you can go 111 minus 21. It, it gets you 90, 9. So it'll get you 9. And then the power ball is 7 and the power play is 2. So you take that times it, that'll get you 14. You subtract 7 from 2, it'll get you 5. So the main numbers, <clears throat> the connections, well, you have what's written on the refrigerator. You have the 9111. You have 11 in the beginning. Sixty-five itself, the number sixty-five. When you when you add six to five, that'll get you eleven. When you take the last number five and add that to the Powerball seven, that'll get you eleven. Seven plus two is nine. The Powerball and Power Play nine. 5 plus 6 is 11 going from right to left. So you have your 9, 11 mirrored and backwards from 11, 19. And then plus 44 plus 65 is 111. So your first number is 11. Your last number, your first number is 11. Your first three numbers, lowest numbers, is 111. Your last four numbers combined is 111. Your last two numbers added together is 9, which is the power play number 2 times 2, and then the power ball number 7. You add that, it's 9. You times it, it's 14. You add the 6 plus 5, it's 11. You add the 44 plus 65, it's 111. I came in with a 1 minute, 11 second video. 11, 11, 11. 11 years, 11 months, 11 days after Joel Karim uploaded the first video. Me at the zoo. And then Matthew Daly crucified me on the 11th month and first day that I, since I've been up on YouTube. And he had 111 subscribers when he did it on 3 2 2018 So, again, 19 minus 11 is 8. 11 plus 19 is 30. 19 plus 39 is... Four, is is 58 39 minus 19 is 20 58 minus 20 is 3 8 39 plus 44 is 83 83 backwards is 3 8 the first three numbers have a connection of the number 38 I think I've seen 38 a couple times so far in the in the lottery drawing. The actual number 38 itself. So what's the important numbers? And what is it telling me? What are these numbers? These numbers are screaming at me. They were scream they were screaming last night when I looked at them. I did a couple videos. You look at the videos itself from the beginning. 11 plus, plus 19 is 30. 39 
minus 19 is 20. 44 minus 39 is 5. 65 minus 44 is 21. It's a down dynasty is what it is. 2616 down dynasty. 26 and 16 is 42. 26 minus 16 is 10. 42 and 10 is is 52. You know when you watch the third base coach and he gives you signs? Some of them are just decoy signs. Others are... You'll know what the sign is when you, when you know what sign to look for in order to find the sign that comes next. It's not like you're looking for the actual number itself, like 11 or 19 or 39 or 44 or 65 or 7 or 2. You're looking for what does it add up to or what does it subtract to, subtract from. What is it that the first two sets of numbers, what is it? that it adds up to and then when you go to the next set of numbers when you're carrying your you know when you do your count it's column one two three four five six which is the final power ball and then seven is the power plate so really there's seven numbers the seventh angel begins to sound the seventh power ball number When you start with column one and column two, and you add them together, you get your number, you know, or you can subtract it. But again, you gotta know what sign to look for. And then when you take your second column and you go along with the third column, what are you looking for there? Are you looking to add the numbers? Are you looking to subtract the numbers? from 39 to 19 and it'll get you 20. And then when you go in from the third column to the fourth column, 39 and 44, are you adding that up to get to your eight three, which is your 38 backwards for the third time with the connection of these numbers? Or are you just simply subtracting it from 44 to 39 to get your number? When things are being, when a dynasty is is going down, that means what? So what dynasty is going down, and then what dynasty is taking over? Who's taking over? What dynasty? Well, there lies the lies the number, and then so the next drawing I would expect for the final the final countdown. At some point, these numbers are adding up in order to win the lottery ball on a specific day. But now I need to know what how from the time that the lottery is won how many how many drawings until the numbers that they're showing you to add up or subtract are going to line up so the guy from 7-eleven gave me a breakdown of the winnings power play two 
Somebody just took two million dollars of my jackpot. There's that three eights again. So this is where I win. I'll win my money at Seven Eleven, eleven thirty one one store. <clears throat> so basically, it's like this. Eight thousand six hundred twenty three people won four dollars because they got the Powerball number. So what that does is when you're when you're playing two dollars, this is what it does. It keeps you hooked. You you win your two dollars back plus another two dollars to buy another ticket. That is how the money just keeps plenishing because you'll get a free ticket and then you may want to put in an extra two dollars to you know have it have another uh, I guess you would have to pay an extra two dollars for the power power play two or the double play I gotta start looking at the double play numbers too because I'm only looking at the first power play because the double play is freaking double the play. But the double play, you got your 38 in there. And then the regular numbers at the top, you got a combination of three, th three 38s. <clears throat> One person won $2 million last night. So basically, I don't know, like a hundred and or like one million and thirty three hundred thousand or something pay out in cash, right? Yeah. Because one person got five out of five number somebody last night <coughs> is one happy camper somebody last night got the number two 38 53 62 and 63 they hit it they got the double play so they got the two million dollar jackpot For the regular, four people got four of the numbers. But you only get 200 hours for that. Just for the four numbers. So obviously the five is, is where it's at. It goes from a couple hundred dollars hitting four to a million hitting five. And then to the jackpot, whatever the jackpot is to hit all six. And then the annually value 119 million and the cash value 61 million estimated jackpot. So, here's what's going on here. During the during the playoffs, I didn't do much paying attention to the actual scores previously. I didn't even pay attention to the to the previous scores until a few days before the Super Bowl. And then I realized I realized wow, I already predicted the 19 to 12 football score being 6 to 9 at, at at halftime for the Eagles and Chiefs before I looked at all of the super all of the the playoff numbers and when I went back and looked at it lo and behold the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers had already scored a 19 to 12 theme 
and six to nine at halftime. It, it was it was one of those things where I'm, I'm it's like I'm kind of salty that that happened already because I had this elaborate plan that was going to take place in the Super Bowl where it was going to be a tie game <coughs> with one minute left and you know the Eagles were going to block the field goal for the Chiefs at the end of the game where this was my one thinking pattern before I switched it up at the end, at the very beginning of the Super Bowl. I was saying that it would be a tie game 12-12. Not exactly 35-35, but it would be a tie game. And then so one of the scripts for each brother is whoever has whoever owns the Eagles Philadelphia representing that the bald eagle well they would they would win the Super Bowl by blocking a, a field goal attempt to, to to end the game they would block it and run it all the way back and score and win 19 to 12 on the last play of the game instead it was similar, but the Chiefs just, when it was tied up, they just kicked the field goal and won. I never studied the numbers in the Super Bowl pattern, the playoffs of any game, anywhere, at any point in time in my life did I, did I go and look at all the scores of a playoff season. I did it this time around. Considering all the patterns that lined up with what was what the final score was going to be, well, it it wind up being three eight. Three eight was the the key component number, along with three. But in order to get the 38, you have NASCAR morning racer with the tail light out, ass rider. And because of me studying these scores, my cursor was able to give you the final score of the Super Bowl. My lips were able to speak the words out of my mouth with the pattern of what's going to happen play by play up until the end of the game. And at the end of the game, well, there was a penalty flag thrown. It was against the Eagles. Because here are the things that I said in the Super Bowl before the game started. I feel like I was given the wrong score <coughs> because the real score, as I was going over the 12-12 tie, the real score, my cursor skipped over to the 23 that had it two times, the 20-23 the when Jacob was showing you the the actual score itself, the tie game. My cursor skimmed over to number 23, as I said, the real score. Then it's going to be a tie game, and there's going to be some type of play at the end of the game where one team's getting ready to score. The Kansas City Chiefs couldn't have been getting ready to score as much as after that some play there's going to be some play in the game after that some play happened which was the flag the penalty the cheap flag the cheap the false start false flag false approachment of defense once that penalty flag took place that was the turnover that I was talking about at the end of the game because the Eagles were going to get the ball back with about a minute and a half remaining 
being down by three. Instead, they get the ball back with eight seconds left because they turned the ball over. He purposely held them because he was told to hold them because they play, they practiced that play. Uh, just in case if he didn't actually score the touchdown, but they weren't planning on scoring the touchdown anyway. The, the plan for that one, because sometimes, you know how they hold, they'll hold just to make sure, just in case if the kicker doesn't kick the field goal so he can get it out of try. But all he got to do is just kick it up in the air and it'll vortex will take it. Because it's miracles, signs, and wonders. If that game was even literally played in the Super Bowl or everybody involved was inside of that game and they really just played a video game and everybody's like, shh. But considering the game was tied at the end of the game, 35-35, Christ standing on Mount, Mount Olives, splitting down the middle, a great earthquake was to happen on Super Bowl 57 by, you know, play by play. Now, Carmen Electra, Carmen Electra, is that who it is? Probably. She was talking to Jacob Israel. <coughs> saying, I love that the Super Bowl pick, you nailed it. And Jacob's like, well, well I mean... It's not like I knew, you know, it was gonna that, that was gonna happen. No, of course not, not at all. You had no idea. That giant riff at the end of the game at 30 meters deep, a deep is like a deep ball kick through the uh, upright, straight down the middle. When the game's tied 35 35, split right down the middle. And then because the 200 meters is really just a number two itself which is both teams are going to have, so two teams are going to have 35 points. And it's going to come down to a three, not a 30 meter deep, just three, three points. And that'll get you your 38. 38, 35, 73. 38, 35, 73, hut! I think, is that what they do? I think so. Go ahead, buddy. You can go. You're already there. So what happened at Super Bowl 57? The, the Chiefs, they pierced the eagle, the dead eagle on the ground with a three-point field goal in the red zone as the game's going to be tied. And, oh, and Rocky Balboa theme was going to be opposite day. It wasn't going to be Jalen Hurts to get hurt and come back as the Rocky theme. It's going to be my homie. My homie got hurt, not really, he pretended he did, fell on his knee did, like it was nothing, got up in agonizing, acting agon, actonizing pain, he got, he was in such actonizing pain, I don't even know how he pulled it off at the end of the game where he drove right down the middle and, and got about 45 yards to set up that play that I seen at the end of the game when the game is tied the team's getting ready to score which means they were throwing the ball at the end zone getting ready to score with a tie game, the game on the line and here comes the penalty flag of holding on defense Eagles to cost them the game so there was your turnover, there was your flag it was at the end of the game. The Chiefs were getting ready to score, whether it was a drive into the end zone or a kick field goal to win at the end of the game. It would be in the red zone itself within the 15-yard line. And man, did they do exactly what I said they would do before the game. Now, some signals, some score scenarios, like the one scenario with the Eagles winning or the Chiefs winning 27 to, to 24, 
winning by three, but really, it, you know, 11-11 is, is the number you're adding to get the actual score. So it's the same thing. <coughs> same thing with these here. When you make scenarios, like, all right, so let's see, it's Chiefs, one of the brothers' theme is to, they're going to, it's going to be a tie game, 24-24, which it was because the tie-in was 24 points in the first half for the Eagles, 24 points for the second half for the Chiefs to get your 24-24 Jesus slash Barabbas theme. That did happen. So if you go over a scenario of 27-24, really when you add 11-11 to 27, it'll get you 38. And when you add 11 to 24, it'll get you 35. So that scenario was like, that scenario was like, all right, you got 19, 11, but you really got 30. And then you got 39 and 19, but you really got 20. And you got 44 and 39, you really got five. You see how, how what I'm saying there? I know Jonathan Click knows what I'm saying. Because it's about the scenarios and then whatever numbers you're adding or subtracting is what the real score is what you're really talking about. Just like, I right, would have said the Eagles are going to win 31 to 24. So they're going to win by seven. But really, or no, I'm sorry. The one scenario was 27 24. The other scenario was the Chiefs winning by seven because they blocked the field goal and ran it back as the Eagles were getting ready to win the game. And it was such a devastating loss by <clears throat> by the, the field goal being blocked. And the Chiefs running it all the way back, you know, like 31 to 24. But really, it's 38 minus 31 is 7. And then 35 minus 24 is 11. So 7-11. That's then Trump was there at 7-11. So let's see, first time in my life, I predict a, a stock market to go down 3,000 points on Jonathan Clegg's birthday. You know, it really needs to tumble. I, have, I haven't made an actual stock market prediction before that in my lifetime, but on that day, I was compelled to do it. And for whatever reason, that it led up to it at that time, that was the pattern I was going by. And so four minutes before the bell rang, I nailed it. The stock market tumbled 3,000 points. The only real question is, did I actually nail it? Did I really, well, yeah, I did. I mean, it, it happened, but how did it happen? Was it truly just me or did Jonathan Click make those numbers go down and tumble because I wished him a happy birthday almost three years ago. Only he truly knows, but I don't think I'm that damn good. So I'm giving credit to the powers that be. They were listening and they said, we're going to go with what Robin says. Because you, no matter what, whoever you are, if you're a hater, like, you know, John Wise the third, when he's acting, because he's not that stupid, I mean, he's not that stupid. <clears throat> Anybody who's an enemy of mine, that you can't stand my predictions. You, you, they make you sick, right? All right, well, that's fine. It's, I understand. I made a lot of them. I get it. People have predicted things. It's just so annoying when people predict stuff because you don't know. So stop acting like you do. <coughs> yeah, but the problem with that is some people do know. And as they're predicting, they pretend they don't know, Jacob. You know what I'm saying? You know you know anybody like that? So here's what you have to... You're going to have to conclude one or the other. You only have two options. Dear hater, you have two options. I'm going back three years ago on March 16th, 2020. Jonathan Cleck. You may hate him also. If you hated me, 
or if you hate him, you're also going to hate me, right? Is that how that works? So if you hate me, you're going to hate him also. Fine. While you're hating me and Jonathan Kleck at the same time, three years ago, on his birthday, because you can't stand him, you can't stand me, there was a recorded video before the bell rang four minutes beforehand. As I'm telling you, I there's something about Jonathan Kleck that, you know, three years ago, I'm saying, this guy, he... He, he has the script of the world. Him and Stephen James. You, you know how I caught on so fast to Jonathan Click having the world script? Because I knew Stephen James had it too. And anybody he's collaborating with would know the same thing. So here's what you need to... Here's what you have to answer in your head or out loud to anybody that is a hater of me and Jonathan Click. still. On that day, when I predicted that it would go down 3,000 points and tumble. And I did it for the first time in my entire life. you never seen a video beforehand saying, well, I'm gonna predict the stock market today. you never seen it. The, the, the evidence is the time, 9.26 a.m. The evidence is Jonathan Click rang the bell at 2.26 p.m. And then the evidence is, as I said, it's gonna tumble 3,000 points. You know, 3,300, you know, like like 3,000 points. It really needs to tumble. And then at 4.26 p.m. when the newscaster got up and said, the worst point loss in history? Is that correct? Yeah, the worst point loss ever. Huh. 3,000 points at what? I mean, it ended at 2,997, I think. 2,997 which was the amount of people that died at 9-11. At 2,997 people died. And that was the closing number, 2997. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure if it was, it was either 2977 or 2997, which I think it was. <clears throat> so you're going to have to ask yourself there, hater. There's only two options. You only have two options. There is no third option. Which one is it? Did I predict it dead on and, and just got lucky? For the first time in my life, for the first time ever, the stock market crashed 3,000 points, went down. For the first time ever. So the first time the stock market tumbled that many points was on Jonathan Kleck's birthday, the same day I wished him a happy birthday, and the same day I said that that's exactly what's going to happen. Not only is it going to go down 3,000 points, but it's really going to tumble. Option two, did Jonathan Kleck make it switch up and go down 3,000 points because he's in control of the financial system in the United States of America? And... As the king of media in Persia, between him and uh, uh, Stephen James, who has the world script in his hand, who was singing me a song the day before, uh, I think Ned Peppers got shot up. I forget which event it was, as I was already working through my batches of six and four stuffed peppers, right? <clears throat> and then the 28th. Or 29th. I think he did it on the 29th. So considering that Jonathan Clegg has the ability to control the stock market and the numbers and he can make it go up and down at will, he can he can uh, say, well, you know what, here. Tomorrow's numbers are going to be 11, 19, 39, 44, 65. All right? Hut. That's what they're going to be. I'm willing to bet. Oh, wait, let me finish this up. You have only two, because there's no other option. Which one is it? Did I do that? Or did Jonathan Clegg do that? Just because I wished him a happy birthday. I did. I wished him a happy birthday, and he gave me a birthday present. 
That's how it works. Well, I've concluded that it was Jonathan Kleck that did it. So, same thing with the Powerball numbers. I'm going to say <coughs> once I when I when I when I hit the Powerball, the lottery, when I get all six numbers and get the jackpot. Um I'm going to hit it with the help of figuring out the numbers. I'm going to predict the numbers. They're all going to line up. And then because I because it's like the dragon giving his power ball over unto the beast. The dragon's giving his power, the the power ball number. That is the power that he can give over because there's no other greater power on planet earth than to be able to control the power ball you can control the power ball numbers and you can hit them at will you are the dragon you're the ruler you, you own it so when I have hit this power ball for the first time in my life when I play it I'm going to play it on his birthday I'm going to play it well the drawing will be an hour before his, the drawing is going to be one hour and one minute before 316 begins <clears throat> so on 316 when I upload my video you know, Lord willing, of course, you'll see the winning numbers and I hit the jackpot. So, people like John Quentin Wise, who says I like to make friendship with the world, which I do, because I want to be friends with the world. Like God so loved the entire, the whole world. But yeah. What part of that don't you understand, dummy? And, uh, so you don't get anything from it. I'm not. You're not getting anything. I'm not giving you anything. You know why? Because you're part of the inside anyway. You have access to doing stuff, but you have to keep your bird caged uh, in order to do that. I don't. No man takes my crown. No man takes it. I don't give it up. No man takes it. You're not taking my crown. Now the threats are there to just. Do the old chopperuski. Whatever, whatever, whatever happens, happens. It's just whatever. But in the meantime, you get to not a nothing, hypocrite. Because you're probably Stephen James behind a mask anyway, uh, or John from Denver, one or the other. Because you damn sure ain't just whoever you think you are whoever you're acting like you are so people like that that try to even though you're acting it's still you're still leading people astray with your with your uh, acting beliefs and that has to end too all the acting has to stop because when actors at the top of the list stop acting when they start telling the truth like Carmen was telling Jacob why don't you like when she was talking about her sister and what she's really good at is getting attention so start telling the truth and do what you are what you do the best which is getting attention so there you go once once the top tier like Elon Musk from Mars once he's occupying planet Earth from Mars, coming down here, well, once he starts telling the truth about everything, everybody else underneath, they either have to tell the truth or you're fired. And that's how the system's going to be from here on out. It's already getting that way. It's just a, a process. It's a period of time <clears throat> that it has to go that way. <clears throat> I 
So because when I set my mind to whatever it is that I need to set it to, I don't know why it took me this long to figure out, huh, I, 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 this is what I need to do. I need to act, I need to, I'm not getting paid, right, like you guys are, you lying YouTube witches and agents and trolls. I don't get paid because I'm not spreading disinformation like you I'm not lying about people like you I'm not I'm not uh, evil like you therefore my bank account it's not like yours however my bank account coming up is going to be like this because if anybody has faith in me well and you paid attention for quite some time and you've seen the results and you know who I'm communicating with clearly. And you're encouraging and you're... Even if you're... It's like... Even, even like John from Denver is a good example. Even if you were John Wise behind a mask as a as an alternative... The other evil side of you and... It's like you haven't been converted yet. Even if that was you. I'm taking care of you. Not... John Wise, your other character. He can go to hell. Uh, or, he, you are, aren't you already here? Nah, even though, even, even at the end, I would still, if John was a real person, or if he was really here on planet Earth, I would go visit him. I would cut him a check and take care of him. Because I know you're acting. So, but, you know, it's still annoying people acting as if they're stupid. But we're not done yet. So the point being is, for those of you that you pay attention, you're still watching my videos for because of this reason. You, you've seen enough that yeah, there's no question Jonathan Clegg is doing all his videos specifically directly about you, Robin. And Jacob Israel, he keeps talking to you. And they just, all these people are talking to you. I don't even know why they are, but they are. I mean, I am not sure why they are, but they are. Because you've made it very evident with your ability to gather, collect information as a defense attorney and slash prosecutor you're able to do it, so yeah, I'm still watching your videos, and I, I actually believe you're going to hit the lottery, it's crazy, because the amount of evidence that you showed just with the Super Bowl alone, studying the numbers a week beforehand, and then getting so deathingly accurate with just the roundabout F6 way, the, the uh, King Doge way, I'm with you, Robin. I can't wait to see you hit it. Well, me neither, because when I'm doing this work day in and day out, all I'm really doing is speaking it to myself out loud, but when I get behind a computer, I'm, I'm collecting data and I'm putting it together as an algorithm. And I'm, I'm at some point, I'm going to nail it but I never played the lottery before. I never played the Powerball, and I don't even know how to do it. <clears throat> I just assume I put numbers in and say, here, the Powerball, the Power Play, Double Play 2. I, I guess I'll just double it up, right? Like, if I put my numbers in, I'll say, yeah, add those to the Power Play 2, just in case, and pay an extra $2. I might pay $24 that day on, on different combination packages. And one of them is going to hit. And that's the best part about the Powerball is you got multiple choice. Just like the Super Bowl. The scenarios, you know, when I'm telling you what the possible scores could be, 27, 24. But when you just add the 11, 11, it'll get you the actual score tied before the three-point rift in the red zone that wins the game. That pierces the eagle and there's a dead eagle on the ground. <coughs> Things like that, all I have to do is study it. And then the algorithms will add up 
themselves in my head. And that was pretty amazing when Gene Revel showed the Rain Man clip as I'm talking about I'm rambling on the numbers and nine and I had to take the 14 I had to plus the nine is 23 and and all those numbers are right there when when Tom Cruise and the other guy they're adding it up with the Rain Man and all the numbers I said were right there on that guy's freaking calculator along with 46 uh, being the the chromosomes because it was a because the 9 and the 14 equal 23. And then there was an actual 23 there too. And then two of those 23s, which would be like the power play number, you know, t you times it, it, it winded up being 46. And then I started rambling on these numbers at the age of 46, which is how old I am now. And it takes 46 years to build a temple and because it has 23 chromosomes from the mother and father from the from the uh the woman's seed and the serpent seed so being born from the woman and the serpent seed it's not necessarily that satan that it he's the one that is my my thought like as if i came from his his lineage his seed meaning liquid form but the fact that the idea of a man parthenogenesis in itself to to refertilize and become pregnant through that surgery that's the serpent's seed which is the idea he planted the seed in your head you went and <clears throat> did the transformation and you had a son Therefore, that son became the son of man. And so his actual father itself is the person that gave birth to him. And, but the seed is the serpent seed because it's the, you know, before you, before anybody parthenogenesis themselves, it was, it wasn't that way. So you came from the lineage of the serpent seed. What I'm saying is <clears throat> my father's the devil, all right? Uh, he's your he's your father, he's my father, but he's not my spiritual father. Anybody can be my dad, but you're not my father in heaven. Even though you can live in heaven and rule heaven as Satan himself and be my physical literal father, but you're not my spiritual leader. I'm your spiritual leader dad so it's like becoming your dad's uh, father in a sense becoming your dad's father because you're his father you're his spiritual father leader as he gave birth to you as a as a mother father creator so there's that that's how it works the patterns the numbers the algorithms as I study the Powerball, after six years of doing the YouTube videos, coming to the conclusion that I just may not ever meet any of you is because you don't even live on planet Earth. You live in heaven or you live in another, <clears throat> you live in Mars or, you, or you're the angel of the bottomless pit and you're never gonna actually come up from the Earth but you're gonna, but you, you've risen because you've been freed you know, your heart, your your mind, your soul. And what you're going to do is you're, you're going to give me the damn Powerball numbers because what am I even waiting for? Well, I was waiting to meet people. Yeah, but Robin, what if you never do? What if these people are just straight holograms and they're not even, they're just angels of light and they're light beings and they can't come down here to earth. It, it, you can't walk around as a light being and not be noticed as an angel from heaven. Yeah, but well, they could put masks on and stuff. Right, but what if they never, what if you never meet anybody and you're looking for some type of a, I don't know, like a meeting at some point 
and it never happens, then what? You wasted all your time on YouTube for nothing? Well, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna hit the jackpot, and that's what I'm gonna do. That's what God, God is telling me. I'm gonna hit that freaking jackpot and defy all odds and shut everybody up. I'm gonna shut the mouths up of everybody because you wish you can hit the lottery. You wish you could hit the lottery. You just don't know what to do. You may be a hater in life and have anger in your heart, or you're just acting, but you may still have anger in your heart. You have doubt in your heart. I make you sick. You can't stand the fact that I keep talking. You have to watch and listen because you're assigned to me. You have no other choice. But remember, nobody's... It's like the odds of winning are just so... It's actually one in 200 and something million. That's what I thought it was 2 billion, but close enough. The odds are so stacked against me that I would have a better chance being the President of the United States than hitting the lottery. So think about it. When I hit the lottery, I'm running for President because I had a better chance of being the President than I did for winning the lottery, which means I am the President. If I win the lottery, I am the President already because the odds are stacked against me. I wasn't supposed to hit the lottery. Well, you can't just hit the lottery. You have to know the angel of the bottomless pit, and he has to he has to speak to you through numbers and tell you what's coming next. Read between the lines. It's not the numbers that I'm getting. It's read between the lines. Which ones are you getting? What do you what are the numbers at the end when you add it up or subtract it? 30 important numbers, but then how do you know when to play it? Because that would be the ticket. That would be the key for the future is, all right, well, I'm, I'm seeing the patterns of the numbers, but the leftover numbers, when you read between the lines, how do you know what date to pick it? So I would have to study it from month to month and look at how many, how often is it hit and then go by the average and then pick a certain date that's important and and go from there so I feel like it's like this I'm being given the numbers and I'm gonna hit the lottery with all six of them I'm gonna hit the jackpot as well. <laughs> I love confirmation boy I love confirmation like that I've been driving for 57 minutes and as soon as I say I'm gonna hit the lottery, all six of them, the camera drops. That was a mic drop. That was a spiritual mic drop. <coughs> so once I do that, after that, I get to make the numbers. I I just get to say what the numbers are gonna be and it'll, it'll hit because because I've proven that Jonathan Kleck already made the stock market drop 3,000 points. And in the title itself, in the news, that's broadcast throughout the entire world, it said the stock market tumbled 3,000 points for the first time ever in the history of existence. And the first time I even predicted a score of any sort of the stock market in my life. It was the worst, the greatest, but the worst point loss in history and the greatest prediction I've ever had that was so dead on accurate it's sickening it's sickening because I didn't get a dime for it not that I was looking for a dime but something so dead on it's it's like it's worth something you know what it's worth it's worth three years of consistent I will never leave Jonathan Kleck nor forsake him I don't care how many of you are on that channel I don't care if you're good or evil I don't care if one of them's trying to lead me astray one of them's still trying to act like he wants to chop my head off like a like a uh, John Wise the third Jonathan Kleck uh, on there I don't care Johnny <clears throat> because it's worth 
three years. Think about the think about how much money you guys make in three years, sitting back on your lazy boy with your feet up and uh, just trolling people and whatever it is that you do for two hundred thousand dollars a year, six hundred thousand dollars for three years. Even if it's like a payoff like that, you know. <clears throat> but this is going to be the jackpot because God knows that once I hit it the one time by by predicting it and meeting them there once the dragon gives his power over to me the power ball number from that point on I'm like Johnny I can just say yeah you know what here uh 29 38 42 55 66 7 hut you want to bet that certain games when the quarterback reads out those numbers you want to bet that I well I'll bet you I'll bet you enough no money but I'll bet you that there are some of the games at a certain hike session you know like the third base coach whether it's the third uh hike the third set of downs on, on all right so it's you got to look for third down the angel of the bottomless pit and then the angel of the bottomless pit when he does the hike numbers that's the neck that's the powerball of drawing guaranteed that's what you guys do at some point i bet you i can go back and listen to somewhere in the super bowl where uh jalen hurts or or my homie gave the the Powerball drawing numbers for the next Powerball. Because once you hit that, then it's not going to be enough money to, you know, to... to to change things on the planet, I have to be able to hit it at will. I have to be able to be a superhero like Robin. And once there's a call for some kind of financial situation, I'm able to go into my little my little pray booth because Robin's superpower is prayer. That's what my superpower is. It's prayer. And it's not like I pray, you know, like, in a traditional sense my prayers are more talking out loud to the people that run the planet and throwing scenarios out there and getting answers so when the financial situation happens in the future I'll be able to just get my prayer booth and have my prayers answered Hey, Robin. What were you doing on 2-2-2-2-2-2 at 2-2-2 a.m.? Well, I was, I mean, 2-2-3. Well, I was dreaming up the Powerball number. I was looking for a down dynasty. I was looking to add the first two numbers and subtract the next two numbers and subtract the next three to four numbers and then take the rest of the numbers and add them up and subtract them and times them by two and it'll get you my next powerball number on 3 15 11 what were you doing on 3 1 5 2 0 2 3 at 1 0 dot dot 5 9 p.m i was jumping up and down screaming at the top of my lungs I mean, in my head, with the winning Powerball in my hand, then I have to worry about getting getting robbed and threatened or kidnapped. Yeah, there you go. I might get kidnapped if that happens. So I might want to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I might want to bring armed guards to me to the with me to 7-Eleven uh, the next day.